All right, in this lesson, we'll begin our exploration of the pandas library by creating our very first pandas series objects. Now, a series is a one-dimensional labeled array. So the easiest way that I can describe it is sort of like a more powerful version of a Python list. A pandas series stores data uh, in a sequenced order, and it's just one-dimensional data. It's like one column of information. Now, just like whenever we're working with any type of data, consistency is the most important thing here. So our, our Panda series can consist of any data type. Uh, it can have string values or integer values or floating point number values or Boolean values. The data type doesn't matter, but consistency should always be the goal. So whatever data type you have, it should stay the same ideally throughout the entire series. That will just help ensure that uh, things work smoothly and efficiently. So in order to create a pandas series object, we'll have to call a method on our pandas library. It's actually called the series method. And it falls into a category called constructor methods. That name comes from the fact that these methods construct a brand new object for us to work with. And in our case, our new object will be a new series. So in order to generate this uh, series object, we'll need to call that method. But we'll also need to give it an input because we need to tell pandas what we want to provide as the values that will make up the values within our panda series. In, or, in order to do that, we can feed it an existing Python data type like a list, and it will basically take the values from that list and convert it to values within a series. So I'll begin this lesson by creating a variable called ice cream, and I'll make it store a Python list of strings. So let's do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, and my favorite, rum raisin. Now these values are all random and arbitrary. If you want to come up with your own strings, by all means, I'm just basically creating fake random data here. So here we have a Python list of four elements called ice cream. What I'm going to do at this point is reference my pandas library. I know I have to use it. And we have that in our alias pd. Whenever we have a library or an object, we always have to uh, follow the reference with a dot or a period. This is called dot notation. And you can think of the dot as saying, go one level deep into this thing, go one layer down, or step into the lobby of this library. And th at this point, we're kind of entering pandas, and now we can issue it a command. How do we find out all the things that we can do with pandas? Well, at this point, we can press the tab key right after the dot, and Jupyter Notebook will show us this menu on screen that's basically going to list all of the available things that we can do at this top level of pandas. So there are hundreds of available options here. Certainly you don't have to memorize or know all of them, but this uh, can be particularly helpful whenever you're trying to find the right method or the right thing that you want to do. What's really great here is as, as soon as you start typing, it's also going to limit the results to what you've currently typed and what it, what it matches within the pandas library. So for example, I want to use my series constructor method, which starts with a capital S. So if I write a capital S right here, it's going to show us the results from the pandas library that match. And you can see series is the very first option that's available there. Once it's selected, I don't even need to type it out. I can just press the enter key and now we have it locked into place and we've selected the right method. Now, whenever we're calling any method, we always need to provide a set of parentheses. So I'm going to put the left parentheses and Jupyter Notebook will automatically fill in the right one. Parentheses are always required at the end of a method or it will not run. Within these parentheses, I'm going to feed in my ice cream list. So for now, before we dive into the more complex behind the scenes stuff, which I promise we'll get to in a few lessons, for now, just think of this as the input. So I'm taking my ice cream list of four values right here, and I'm saying, pandas, please create me a brand new series and use the values from this ice cream list. So ice cream is basically my input. My output is going to be a brand new panda series. Let's execute the cell with, with shift enter. And there we have our very first panda series. On the, on the right side, you can see my values are represented here in the exact same order they appeared in my original ice cream list. So there we have all four of them. On the bottom, you'll see this little D type tidbit, and that's short for data type. And that's going to tell us a little bit about the data type that makes up the values within my panda series. Now, if you're working with something like integers or floats, it's just going to say int or floats. Uh, here it says object. An object is actually the internal pandas lingo for string. This was a little bit confusing for me when I first saw it. But whenever you see object, that basically means string. 
So in this case, we do indeed have string values, so this is proper, everything is good. Now on the left here, we have an additional component, and that's called the index. So the index in this case resembles basically an index for a Python list. So for example, when we have a Python list like this, the very first value gets an index position of 0, the second value in line gets the index position of 1, and so on. And this is basically the exact same thing, it's just visually output for us. Now, the, the, one of the key advantages of a pandas series over a Python list is that the index labels do not have to be numeric. They can be any data type. So in the next couple lessons and throughout, these, uh, throughout this module and future modules, we'll actually see that we can set this index right here to be anything from strings to date time objects to everything in between. For now, the reason that pandas is giving us this uh, default um, numeric one is because that's the standard process. That's the default. If we don't explicitly tell pandas what we want to use as the index, what we want to use for the labels for each of these series values, it's basically going to start a count at zero and give each uh, value within the series its own position or its own counting number. Now, just like with most things in programming, like arrays or lists, that count is going to start at zero. That's something that definitely throws off a lot of beginners. So because it doesn't start at one, but rather zero, the very last index position will always be one less than the total number of actual values within the series. So in this case, we have four total items within this series, and our index is actually going to end at three, because the very first item starts at zero, not one. So here we have basically three components. We have the index to the left, we have the values to the right, and we have this little uh, information at the bottom that tells us the uh, data type of the values. Now, as I mentioned, the values within a series do not have to be strings. They can be anything. So let's dive into a few more examples with uh, different types of data to see how the exact same thing is going to work. So I'll begin in the cell below by creating a new variable called lottery. And this one will just be a list of integers, so whole numbers. I'm just going to do six values, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. I have six items in this list. You're welcome to add as many or remove as many as you want. And now below, I'm going to repeat the same syntax. Let's call our library, which is PD. That's our alias for pandas. A dot to basically say, do something with this library. Our method, which is the thing we want to do, the operation we want to perform. And that's going to be series. And at this point, again, I can type in something like SE and press tab. And if it knows that there's only one thing that matches what I've already typed, it's going to uh, basically complete it for me, auto-complete it. If there's more than one thing that matches, it's just going to show me the entire list. I can use my arrow keys to navigate and then press enter to lock the one that I want into place. So here we once again have our series constructor method. It's a constructor method because it constructs or builds something for us. In this case, it's a pandas series. Once again, all methods, not just constructor methods, but any method you're talking about, always requires parentheses at the end. So I'll place my parentheses right there. And then again, here we are feeding the input to this uh, constructor method. We're telling it what we want to use as the values. So I'm going to t write in lottery. Let's execute this. Now this one will be a little bit more confusing because we have two integer values on each row, but basically it's the exact same thing. The integer values from my lottery list have been uh, placed on the right here. And because we didn't explicitly specify what we wanted to serve as the index labels, Pandas has automatically generated a numeric sequence that starts at zero, goes up to five, which is one less than the total number of values, which is six. And on the bottom here, we have this information. Our data type for these values is an integer type. Again, this D type is referring to the values, not the index. So this thing, in this case, we, we do have integers for both, but this is strictly referring to the values that we have right here. Let's do one more example with Booleans just to get the syntax very comfortable. So I'll create a brand new variable. Let's call it registrations. And I'll create a list of Booleans. Booleans, as a reminder, do not require um, any kind of quotes. That would make it a string. And they're basically trues or falses. True, false, 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 true. There I have five of them in a row. Once again, let's create some space for us. I'm going to use my pandas library, which is pd. I'm going to call the series method within it. I'm going to open my parentheses because all methods require parentheses. And I'm going to write in my data source that's going to serve as my input. So this is what pandas will use to make my series values. And now that I have it, let's press Shift Enter to execute. 
And there we have our third series. Once again, the values from the Python list are now the values in the series. Once again, at the bottom, we have the D type information telling us that the values within the series are Booleans. And once again, because we didn't explicitly specify an index, Pandas has defaulted to its uh, standard default option, which is the numeric index starting at zero. We'll dive into how we can modify this in upcoming lessons. So that's how you can create a Pandas series objects from a Python list. And in the next lesson, instead of a list, we'll feed the series constructor method a dictionary and see what result we get. So I'll see you there.